Hey sliders, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Sylvia Nati, and if you're back, welcome back. I haven't done a sit down video in so long. It's it, 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 it's good to be back here, good to be back in this space. I haven't just like had the chance to tell you guys happy new year like calmly i hope 2021 has been gracious and kind so far it's february now i'm filming this on february 1st happy new month and since it's the month of love i just wanted to talk about crime of passion that kind of love that drives you crazy anyways i'm a bit weird and um, so that's what this video is about i'm just gonna tell you guys a crime story that happened on valentine's day and for those of you guys that are new here i have this series on my channel called brutal beat where i talk about a true crime story while i do my makeup so if you guys are interested in murder investigations and all of that bloody gruesome stuff and you love doing your makeup this is the video for you all of the makeup products that i'll be using on my face will be in the description below and a link to purchase all the products as well let me not just drag this intro for no reason let's just get right on with the video So our story is about a man who came home from work and found his wife's remains in his bathroom floor. It was a pretty gruesome scene considering that her brains were out. You could literally see her brains. On Valentine's Day, February 14th. But there is definitely, definitely more behind the scenes because who would want to murder sweet, sweet Miss Susan Hamilton? Look at her. She's gorgeous was gorgeous who would want to kill her see that's the tea before we even begin what are you doing you've reached this far and you haven't subscribed you haven't liked this video yet just pause the video right now here and subscribe everyone used to say that susan hamilton was john hamilton's soulmate they were lovebirds you know they were supposed to be together have kids together and die together but susan died alone unfortunately may her so rest in peace susan and john were together for 14 years and you know they were honestly everyone's everyone was jealous of them everyone wanted their marriage this man was a doctor so he had enough money to buy her a porsche when you see someone spend as much money as a porsche costs you know that's 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 another type of love right there they were super romantic and you know they're just a couple that love to shower each other with love john always gifted susan with the most luxurious gifts went to extravagant vacations and they just lived a good you know luxurious life mr john was actually a very talented ob gin doctor and he specialized in abortions let me beat that pussy up one more time when they met they were actually divorced from separate marriages with four children in between them over time susan started working at john's part-time clinic where he performed these abortions but it did come at a price because even though john he was 53 years of age he was delivering babies as well but you know he was practicing abortions which definitely garnered criticism from the conservative state there were wanted posters with john's face everywhere around town and there were multiple multiple protests for john to stop this kind of practice john's and susan's marriage just specifically for that reason people didn't look up to them they had a lot of haters <laughs> moving on with the story on valentine's day 2001 john left their house to go complete one of his surgeries that he had planned for the day then he returned home to exchange gift cards with his wife way before going back to work to finish the second surgery that he had planned for the day waiting at the local florist was actually a huge bouquet of orchids that john was gonna get for susan but before he could actually pick them up he was dialing 911 please send police please send an ambulance please i think my wife is dead when the paramedics arrived it was such a sickening scene john claimed to have arrived home and found his 55 year old wife lying on a blood of pool in their bathroom floor. she'd been strangled with two of his neckties and her head had been found smashed yeah i'm telling you smashed like potatoes with so much force that her, some of her brain was exposed i'm so so sorry for putting that thought in your head because even me i'm suffering over here the unknown weapon that was used to smash her head was actually never found john was covered in susan's blood and was literally just crying hysterically you know wondering what who would have wanted to kill his wife with such brutality oh my days going back to that part where he was crying and i was doing making those weird sounds imitating john of him on the telephone with the police officer remember this important information that when he was crying he told the police officer that was on the phone that he was 
giving his wife CPR. Remember the episode of information, it's super important. So the investigation began and the police started to question John. In John's testimony, he was asked who he thought, you know, killed his wife. And one thing that did make sense was since they were attacked, you know, sent death threats by a lot of abortion activists, one of them probably killed Susan. That's what his whole basis and everything was. But they were some red flags. Red flags in the sense of why John should actually be the primary suspect of this case. First of all, Mans said, sorry, there's just some, a lot of background noise, so you guys will just have to bear with me. What the fuck? Man said that he gave his wife CPR, but there should have been blood on his face. It was literally impossible for there not to be blood on his face. And he had no blood on his face when the police arrived at the crime scene. Also, like the wife's brain was smashed in. So like, I don't even need to see pictures. You can just imagine if the brain is smashed in, then there should be a lot of blood on the face. Even me in my right mind, I don't know, maybe it's just me. But do you really think that CPR on someone's brain that is like crushed and smashed would actually work? he had his reasons and at the crime scene there's actually no sign of forced entry nothing was stolen nothing was broken so it's not like a burglar kills her and there were also no bloody footprints leading away from you know the crime scene another super important fact about this story is police found a gift card written by susan and it said i bought this two weeks ago so i guess maybe it doesn't seem as appropriate but i do love you have a good day susan this letter really made police question whether Susan's and John's marriage was as perfect as it seemed. One of Susan's friends told the police that John and Susan actually had a fight because Susan discovered that John was making a call, making multiple calls to a topless dancer. Oop, I'm not, I'm not surprised because <laughs> men, men are just like this. I'm not surprised. John, meanwhile, insisted that she was just a patient but susan insisted it was an affair which i don't think she's lying because even if you're a doctor you just talk to your patients during work hours actually i'm just assuming things anyways i just don't think she was stupid john was taken to the police station they noticed that during his car journey that he was just scratching his knuckles on the mesh divider was he trying to hide something on his knuckles on his hands or any injuries of some sort that was a speculation that was going on in the police officer's head the time slot between the kill and when he was at work was very very tight but it, it was discovered that john was actually late to his second surgery he was charged and denied bail eventually however john had plenty of supporters his supporters were basically saying if he had an affair then maybe susan killed not susan maybe the topless dancer killed susan which honestly is fair judgment like it makes sense jealous topless dancer you know once maybe john promised to the topless dancer that they were gonna get a divorce and that topless dancer just got vexed because they haven't gotten a divorce yet so you know just the basic love triangle thing makes sense upon further investigation susan's blood and skin was actually found on john's driving steering wheel also while loved ones were looking through susan's belongings they had found that some of susan's jewelry were in her underwear and it was unlike susan to do stuff like that so was john trying to make it look like a burglary there was also consistent splatter from an alive susan john's defense team actually said that the investigation and the police officers and everyone who was against john in this case they didn't look enough into the anti-abortionists side of the story enough when he took the sand john said that he loved his wife and he was actually trying to save her he explained the blood on the steering wheel by saying he moved the car for the emergency vehicle he and the stripper also denied an affair if the camera has been changing and moving a lot i'm so sorry i'm just like navigating between shooting into video tiktok videos taking photos anyways <laughs> So because John had many supporters and Susan had many supporters, the trial all came down to the blood evidence. Dr. Hamilton was observed by the paramedics that he was covered in his wife's blood. So when they were in the courtroom, the defense brought in an um, expert, a blood expert. They had him testify on blood evidence, which was an area he was spectacular in. He noticed something that nobody else noticed. He noticed that there was blood inside the right sleeve of Dr. Hamilton's shirt. He said that the stains inside his right sleeve were consistent to as if he were actually beating his wife up with a blunt instrument the courtroom fell silent because i forgot to mention that this expert was actually supposed to defend john but because he was under oath he had to say everything that he knew which ultimately would be the one reason that he was sent to jail without bail and no chance of parole to this day he has tried to get a retrial it's never succeeded he's still in jail as far as i know and yeah he went to jail for second degree murder so you guys tell me what you guys think of this story was it scary how did it make you feel because 
yo you chose literally the most romantic day of the year to kill your wife wasn't that romeo and juliet i don't know yeah life happens happens i hope that their families are okay and everything yeah this was definitely really really gruesome one of the most uncomfortable stories i've told actually no the story before this one is the one that was super uncomfortable so this one comes in number two the only reason this story was uncomfortable was because of the image of susan's head being bashed and brains and everything but other than that if you guys know any stories please comment down below i will be happy to tell them while doing my makeup did you guys like this makeup look let me know down below as well and if you have reached this part of the video do not forget to like comment and subscribe it really really helps my videos a lot a lot a lot if you like and subscribe and with that see you guys next video on valentine's day